Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, The Lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we will take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Cabot's here. I put him down the front row. Murph's sitting on him. Okay. Want one? Yeah, thanks. <coughs> How many tonight? Uh, 32. Hey, what would you think of that ball game today? I've got a theory. Yeah? You win a pennant in spring training camp when everybody's anxious to play ball. Well, what about the regular games? Routine. The Rocher know about this? I'm going to call him tonight and tell him. Huh? May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? I'll take it back here. Okay, but... Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when asked for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Keep it moving, boys, right over here to the end of the stage. Come on, come on. Now turn and face the front, hands at your sides. When I call your number, step out to the circle and face the audience. Keep your head up, eyes straight ahead. Talk right out so everybody can hear what you have to say. Number one, Earl Shell, Grand Theft Auto. Step out, Earl. Right there. Yeah. Now, where do you live? Fourteen in a rough hole. Don't look at me, Earl. Look at the audience. That's it. What's the house number there? Fourteen eighty a rough hole. How long you lived in this city? Oh, my life. Are you married? We're separated, but I guess I'm still married. You own a car? No. Driving a new Buick around town a couple of nights ago, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Stand up straight. Take your hands out of your pockets. You own a gun? No. What about the Webley Fosbury automatic you were carrying when the officers arrested you? Not my gun. I don't own it. Never owned a gun in my life. What do you do? Huh? What's your business? How do you make a living? I work in hotels, mostly. Doing what? Last time I hopped bells at the Pyrmont over on Curtis. How long did that last? Three weeks. Okay, Earl. Step back. Yeah. Number two, Stanley Goodman, armed robbery. <clears throat> What's your address, Stanley? 216 Comer Avenue. What's that? Oh, uh, Motel, uh, the Edelweiss, I think's the name of it. Uh, take off your glasses. You wear them all the time? Most of the time. Were you wearing them yesterday afternoon? Uh, I don't remember. Talk up, Stanley. It's a long way to the back of the room. Uh, I don't know if I was wearing them or not. That's better. Uh, put them back on. How long you been in town? I got here a day before yesterday. Hey, can you people out there hear him? No, You'll have to talk louder, Stanley. Well, don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Anybody arrested with you? Yeah. Fellow back there. Him. Number eight? Yeah. Who is he? Name's Jack something. Where'd you meet him? At the motel yesterday. Number eight. 
Jack Kiefer? I don't know. It sounds like it. I only met him yesterday. Any weapons? No. You don't own a gun? No, I don't. Uh, he had it. What about the car? Yeah. It's mine. What yeah. kind is it? Okay. Fine. 47 Ford convertible, white sidewalks. How do you make your living? I'm a musician, drummer. Ben? I haven't hmm? worked for Hot a while, though, came six over. weeks. Shooting in Park Hill. How old are you, Stanley? 19. A pretty good drummer? Pretty good, yeah. Should have stuck with it. I wish I had. 1738 North Albion. Victim's name, Alfred Brown. How bad is it? Dead when they found him, Ben. Ben. Hello, Asher. Around back. Happened in the basement. It's pretty awful. Shotgun case. Man next door found him. Reported about 940. I've got men covering the block. Okay. Anybody see it? No. Bill falls still on the victim. Over 200 in cash in it. Watch, ring, all that. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's that? Turpentine? Yeah. Pellets blasted a can on the shelf. Any windows? All open. Hello, Ben. Hi, Doc. He died instantly, Ben. It was fired point blank, less than ten foot range. Yeah. Mm. Well, looks it. Lord. Uh, must have been standing about there. The blast knocked him clear back over there. Screens on those windows all shattered. Mm hmm. Whoever did it had to step over him to get up these steps. Mm. This where it was? Yeah. Uh, Twelve gauge. Cartridge? Mm hmm. Okay, who answered the call? Uh, 46 and 72. I want the reports tonight. Doc? Won't take long on this one. Okay. Who reported it, Asher? Well, man next door, Robert Presnell. Says Brown's wife at the movies with his wife. Doesn't know where Brown's son went tonight. Saunders down at the neighborhood theater. Presnell see the body? Yeah. Can he talk? He's okay. Hmm. Turpentine's up here, too. Yeah. Mr. Presnell? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, this is Lieutenant Guthrie. Oh, yes. Well, hello. Uh, have you told Lillian yet? Lillian? That's uh, Mrs. Brown? Yes. Does she know? Uh, we haven't located her yet. Oh, I don't know how she'll take it. Uh, I don't know. She's not very strong. Gee, what an awful thing to happen. Yeah. Well, you can help us a lot, Mr. Presnell, by telling us everything you know, everything you can remember. Oh, I didn't think it was anything until I smelled the turpentine. Now, how's that, Mr. Presnell? Well, I was sitting in my living room listening to the ball game. I heard a noise like an explosion. It was kind of muffled, and I didn't think anything about it until I smelled that turpentine. Then I thought that maybe that some stuff I had downstairs had exploded or something in the heat, you know. Yeah. But everything was okay down there, and when I went outside, I could tell it was coming from Al's house. And then I smelled gunpowder. Al didn't answer the door when I knocked, and so I walked around to the back of the place. Uh, there was a light on in the kitchen, and I was pretty sure he was home. And then I saw there was a light on down the basement. Mm -hmm. Well, I knocked on the screen a couple of times, and then I called, and no one answered me. So I, I looked down the stairs, and I saw his leg at the bottom of the stairs. I went down, then I came back, and I... Phoned the police. Was Mr. Brown dead? Well, sure he was dead. Did you examine him? Oh, no, no, no. But, but I could tell just just the way he was. Mm-hmm. How about a smoke? Mm, no, 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 thank you. I don't use them. But tell me, uh, anybody besides you in your house tonight, Mr. Presnell? No, no, I was alone. Mm. You were alone in your house, and Mr. Brown was alone in this house. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Your wife went to the movies with Mrs. Brown. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. You know what time they left? Well, it was 8 or 8.30, uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. well, now, think back. Before you heard the sound of explosion, did you hear voices? No. Car, maybe? No, no, nothing. No. Mm -hmm. Well, what about after one? No, not a thing. It's a, it's a very quiet neighborhood. Uh, have you set on loud, did you? Well, it was a ball game, you know. Is, uh, 
Is that Mr. Brown's car in the driveway? Oh, you mean the little Chevy? No, that's that's Bobby's car. Bobby? Mr. Brown's son? Uh Uh-huh. Al has... Well, he had a Chrysler, a new one. Not around, Ben. Hmm. Do you know where the Chrysler is tonight, Mr. Presno? No, I don't, unless maybe Lillian and Alice used it to go to the movies. Pretty good friends, are they? Uh, Your wife and Mrs. Brown? Well, neighbors. Yeah, yeah, we're good friends, I guess. How about you and Mr. Brown? Oh, yes, we're neighbors, you know. Happen to notice if anyone came to visit him here tonight? No, no, I didn't. What do you do, Mr. Presno? Hmm? Oh, I'm an accountant. I, I've got my own office uh, on Cedar Boulevard. I see. And how long have you lived in Park Hill? Oh, six, seven years. We bought the house right after the war. Let's see, that's the early part of uh, 47. And you've known Mr. Brown all that time? No, no, I didn't. You see, he didn't move here until a year ago. The uh, People named Hanley built the house, and he bought it from them. Mr. Brown always get along with people around here? Oh, sure, yes. Well, who lives on the other side? Well, the other side? Um, well, that's Abe Levy. He's an insurance man. He's out of town for the summer. He's retired. House vacant? Well, as far as I know. You saw the 12-gauge shotgun down in the basement, didn't you? Mm-hmm. It's Al's gun. Lillian gave it to him last Christmas. Ready to go here, Ben? Okay, Doc. Mm-hmm. Asher, you yeah, want to... right, Ben. Are they... Are they taking him away? Yeah. Where? Downtown. To the morgue. Oh. Mr. Presnell, can you think of anybody who might have been angry with Mr. Brown? Someone he was having trouble with? Well, I told you he got along with everybody around here. Well, yes, yes, I know, but, uh... I mean, somewhere else. Uh, in his business, maybe. Oh, no. no. Well, he never said anything to me, anyhow. <laughs> That's Lillian. Now stay here. Oh. Oh, no, take it no. Easy. Brown, take it easy. No, it can't be, Al. It can't be you. Walked in on a cold, Ben. Oh, no, it can't be. Now, let's get her outside. It can't right. be. Uh, Mrs. Brown, uh, take my arm, will you? I want her. Uh, sure. Yeah. Get it. Doc. Yeah, Ben. Oh, okay. Let her down. Be right there. This is Sergeant Cargan, Mrs. Brown. How do you do? Hello. A little coffee help, maybe? Well, it's very kind of you, Sergeant. Cream and sugar? Black. Here you go. Thank you. I uh, wish we didn't have to do this, Mrs. Brown. No, I understand. You comfortable? Yes. I'm all right now. Did you have dinner at home with your husband? Yes. We just had cold things. Been such a warm day, nothing much. About what time was that? Six, I guess. And then you went to the show with Mrs. Presnell later on? Yes. Your husband didn't want to go to the show? He doesn't care. Didn't care much for movies, no. Was Bobby home tonight to dinner? No, Al and I ate alone. I see. Bobby telephoned late in the afternoon that he wouldn't be home to dinner. He's good about things like that. Did he say where he was? I... No, I don't remember. Did he say where he was going to be tonight? I think he said he had a date or something. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know about his father yet. Easy now, easy. Uh, Pete, get that window in. Oh, yeah. And tell me, uh, your son drives a Chevrolet Coupe, is that right, Mrs. Brown? Yes. The same one that's in the driveway? Yes. I understand you have a new Chrysler in the family. Yes. You didn't take it to the movies? No, we walked. Do you suppose your son has it? What? Well, it's not inside the garage and the Chevrolet's there. Do you suppose Bobby took it tonight? Maybe came back and got it? Oh, I, I would think so, although his father didn't let him drive the new car much and he had his own. And was the Chevrolet in the driveway when you left? Oh, no, no, Bobby had mm. You're sure, Mrs. Brown? Yes. Bobby's what, uh, 17? 16. High school? Tremont High. That's well, past two, Mrs. Brown. The officer stationed at the house says he hasn't shown up or phoned. You usually stay out late like this? No. Now and then, though, huh? Like 
All kids? He's very conscientious about things like that. I can't understand why. Well, he'll show up. You have no idea where he is? He just said he had a date. I don't know what girls he takes out. Excuse me. Guthrie. Lab just finished on the gun, Ben. Three good prints. Yeah. They found two more on the basement door. Blood stained. Anything check out? Yeah, with the ones we got on the Chevy. They all belong to the boy. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. I got an APB out for the boy. You got a license number on the Chrysler? Yeah. Supplementary's checking. Shouldn't take too long. Well, he could have gone a long way by now. Yeah. ME finish? Mm hmm. There it is. Collapse of both. Huh? Ain't that something? He made sure. He sure did make sure. Cover. Yeah, Want to come in here a minute? Right. Ugh. Gosh, I'm pushed. Yeah, me too. You getting hungry? Yeah. What's up? Murph and Crockett can go on out there. I want to call Asher and tell him to get back in. Okay. And here. Well, what's this? Night number from Mrs. Brown's doctor. Better get him out of bed and tell him what's happened. Okay. Anything else? Oh, that'll make it. See you in the morning. Yeah. Night, Pete. Night. Night. How's Mrs. Brown? Oh, same. Doctor finally gave her something. We'll have to talk to her again. Yeah. Fresnel thinks we're barking up the wrong tree. Told me how Bobby and his father play golf every Saturday. Always get along. Mm hmm. Why do you think he'd do it, Ben? I'd like to ask him. Wouldn't we all? Well, let's do it. Yeah. Now, hold it. Huh. Hey, uh, got a quarter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I owe you. Well, what? Hit it. I'm being robbed. It's my quarter. I'm being robbed. Oh, nuts. Well, I'll get it. Hello? Sergeant Carter. When? Okay, thanks. Arvada Division. They found the Chrysler parked in Rolls Boulevard. Out of gas. Oh, that was quick. How about the kid? Combing the area now. We better go on out. Yeah. I'm Rassner, Guthrie. How are you? This is Sergeant Cargan. Glad to meet you, sir. Same here. Sorry you had to make the trip. Huh? We could have sent him in. Prowl car picked him up 15 minutes ago. Hiding in a filling station restroom. I'll be done. Got him down here. Uh Oh. Any trouble? No. Admitted who he was and said he killed his father. Anything else? Uh Uh-uh. What happened between them? Haven't found that out yet. Awful nice looking boy. I wonder about his age myself. Yeah? Oh, this is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Carter, Brown. Hello? Hello, son. I suppose... I suppose you're going to ask me the same things he asked me. Well, we're just going to try and clear this thing up, Bobby. What's it a clear up? I told him I'd kill him. I'll tell you. There isn't anything that has to be cleared up. You've got me. Well, that's pretty much what we know already. How'd it happen, Bobby? 
I shot him with a 12-gauge tonight. I shot him dead. He deserved it. Why do you think he deserved it? I didn't say I think he deserved it. I know he deserved it. Pete? Uh, I guess so, Bernie. Where do you want it? Here's all right. I'll park it. All right. All right, Bobby. Sure. Who's going to sign this? Oh, I will. Give me. Long knife? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see you. Yeah. Nothing. All clean, Ben. Okay. Thought you were taking me to jail. You're there. But I mean, really in jail. This isn't any jail. You just want to get a few things straightened out before we... I told you in the car I haven't got anything to say. There's nothing to say. Look, you've made that part of it pretty clear. There are just some facts we want to know. Nothing more. What do you mean? About what happened tonight. Now, look. You aren't going to leave here or us until we get them. Do you understand? You drive, Ben? No, no, thanks. Bobby? I don't want any. You got home around 9 o'clock. Is that about right? Yeah. You changed your clothes and got ready for your date? Yeah. Your father was home? You know that. Did you argue with him? Yes. Wouldn't he let you have the car? Oh, that wasn't it at all. That wasn't anywhere near it. Then what was it? It doesn't matter to you people, to anyone. It's between him and me. I don't know you. You don't know me. I'm... There isn't any reason for asking me things like that. I've told you what you need to arrest me. <laughs> Look, don't... Please, just don't try to make me tell you because I won't tell you. We don't want to make you do anything, Bobby. You've done enough already. It's just that it'll all come out sooner or later. It might be better for you to tell us about it now. Was there something at school? No, it was nothing at school. You getting along all right in school? Eh? Sure. What year are you? In? I'm a junior. Huh. Don't suppose you smoke yet? No, I don't. I won't ever smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, match, Ben. Mm. Here you go. Thanks. <sighs> Look, fellas, I'm awful tired. What happens now? That's up to the court. I mean, what happens tonight? Now, do I spend the rest of the night in jail or here? Yeah, Ben. I got Bobby Brown in my office. Can you take him over to the main jail and book him now? Be right up. Lieutenant, who found him? Your father? Yeah. Mr. Presnell. Does he look pretty bad? You know how close you were when you pulled the trigger. Yeah, but I didn't look at him when I... Where's Mom? Hospital. But she's sick. How do you think she'd be, Bobby? Son she loved and cared for all her lives. Killed her husband. What kind of a life has your mother got to look forward to now? Did you think about that? Better than with him. I don't understand that. She will. She'll understand it. Your mother? Sure. If you'd seen her the way I saw her tonight, I don't think you'd say that. I don't think you'd say that at all. She feels pretty bad. I did it for her. For your mother? I wouldn't take it because of her. She knew that it was going on, that it had been going on ever since we moved from Chicago. And she didn't say anything to him about it. But you did, is that it? <laughs> When I came in tonight, he was talking to that woman on the phone. He was telling her he loved 
loved her right in Mom's house. Oh. I've seen him with her a couple of times. Once I was at the movies with my girl. We ran into them in the lobby. My own dad out with someone who wasn't my mother. Is this what started it tonight? I told him he had to stop it, and he said I should mind my own business that I didn't understand. And then he slapped me. I went down to the basement. I don't know why. We were in the kitchen, and I guess it was the closest place to run to. He followed me down. He came for me. Did he attack you, Bobby? Try to hurt you? He, he tried to put his arms around me and make up. He wanted to make up, but he didn't want to stop seeing her. <laughs> okay, Ben. Yeah. Come on, son. Yeah? Almost four, Ben. Want a lift? Thanks. I'll walk. Yeah. Night, Pete. Night, Ben. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer... Listen again next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. The end of each line, when asked for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure, the suspect have him out. The officers. Are... The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by E. Jack Newman, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Peter Leeds, Harry Lang, Sidney Miller, Howard McNear, Virginia Gregg, Gil Stratton Jr., and Jim Nusser. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is the CBS Radio Network.